Hi everyone. Today I want to teach you some of the basics of shuttle tadding. This is the shuttle that I'm using. It's from Airlit. It has a small hook and it has a bobbin. I'm going to use this thread which is a pearl cotton thread and I'm going to wrap it in this bobbin. So I'm just going to hold it like this and wrap it around. I've wrapped it this much. You can actually wrap it fully. Now I'm going to cut. You have to separate the thread from the ball. It's different from the crochet and knitting where we don't separate the thread from the ball. Now after this, I want to insert some beads so that while making the uh, chain and the rings, I can use the beads. I generally prefer to use this kind of a bead threader, but if you don't have this, you can use a very simple technique which I'm going to show you right now. This is a thread and it's a very thin thread. So you can pick any thread that you have and wrap this thread around this, this thread, the main thread and hold the two ends like this. Now bring your beads forward. These are the crystal beads that I want to insert. Now I'm going to insert it like this and I'm going to pull through and it gets beaded very easily. So I'm going to bead three beads. Now I can remove off this th uh, thin thread. If you have a threader like this, you can do it in this manner. It has this kind of a sharp pointy thing. Insert your bead into this all the way down. Now insert your thread into this gap and now pull the bead out and it's going to get threaded. Now pull these beads close to the bobbin and have a certain amount of tail for making your chains. The chains will be made using the tail whereas the rings will be made using the bobbin thread. So I am leaving around this much of tail. You can leave it based on the project that you are going to do. Now I am going to insert uh, the bobbin. Your hook is facing this way. So you insert your bobbin like this in such a way that your thread is also facing the same direction as your hook and also it is coming from up. It's, uh, the thread should not come from below, it should come from above. Now keep rotating this so that the beads go around and they are secured inside. Now let's start with a ring. Hold between this thread between your middle finger and your thumb finger, wrap it around your index finger, wrap it around your pinky and hold it back between your middle finger and thumb finger like this. Now my beads are coming out so I'm going to push it all the way inside so that they don't disturb me when I'm doing the work. Now. The tatting is all about making double stitches. Double stitch has two parts. This is the first part of the double stitch. Hold your tatting shuttle and your thread is coming forward. Turn it like this so that your thread is coming above your three fingers. Now insert between this loop and bring it forward and bring it out from above this thread like this. Now when you do this, you make a knot here. Now it is very important to transfer that knot to that thread. There is two ways in, the, in which this can be done. If you make this tight, the knot is forming on this thread. But if you make this loose and pull it, pull this thread, the knot is forming on that loop. Now pull this forward like this so that it comes close to where you're holding the thread. 
So this is the first half of the double stitch. Hold that. Your hook is going to point this way. Now turn it and put it inside from above and pull it out like this and again transfer this thread by making this loose and making this tight and when you pull this from here it goes to the knot goes to that thread now pull this close to the first knot and this is how the double stitch looks now let me change the angle of this camera so that you can see it in a parallel I need to make three double stitches I've already made one double stitch so my hook is pointing this side I am turning this like this I'm going under this thread and I'm going inside this loop and I'm coming out from that loop and I'm making this finger loose and I'm pulling this tight so that the knot is getting transferred and I'm pulling this finger tight so that the first half of the double stitch is close to the first double stitch. Now I'm going to move from here to here and I'm going to complete the second half. My hook is always pointing this side. Now I'm going to go inside from above, pull this forward, make this loose. So that's two. I'm going to make one more double stitch. Now I need to make a peacock. For making the peacock, I'll make the first half of the double stitch in the same way, but I have to leave that much gap. And then I'm going to finish the second half of the double stitch. And I'm going to pull this close. And that is my peacock. If this ring becomes tight, you can just pull the thread, this thread, not this thread, this thread and put it again around your pinky. Now I'll do three more double stitches. You can observe that my uh, bead has come forward. So I'm going to... Two double stitches that's the third double stitch now I will show you how to add a bead so I'm going to pull one bead forward there are many ways in which you can add a bead and uh, each way will give a different kind of a look to the tatting piece so now I pull it forward and add this to the uh, double stitch. It was supposed to be a peacock because I had three double stitches, then a peacock, three double stitches. So instead of having the peacock, I added the bead. So now I will do three more double stitches. And this is how I'm doing it. Now I'll do another peacock. And I will do three more double stitches. Now this ring is complete. So to close the ring, I'm going to Pull this thread which is coming from the shuttle. I'm going to pull it all the way so that the ring closes. And you can see the way I have added the bead, the bead is pointing inside the ring. Now I'll show you how to make the chain. For that I need to turn 
the ring like this and I will use the tail thread to make the chain. For that I am going to wrap the tail thread around my pinky twice. Then I am going to bring this forward and hold it against my index finger and I will hold this piece here with my middle finger and my thumb finger. And this is where I need to make my chains. Let me show you once again. So the thread, the tail thread goes uh, between my pinky and my ring finger and I wrap it twice. Now I take this tadding work behind my index finger and hold it here. Now the way I am going to do the double stitches will be the same. I am going to do it in the same manner. I will do 5 double stitches and I made it very close to the end point of this ring. Now I made 5 double stitches but here I want to add some beads. So to add the beads in the chain I need to have the beads on the tail, uh, tail thread. So I am going to thread the tail thread. You can use the same method to thread the tail thread as well which I showed you earlier but I am going to use my uh, beading helper. So I am going to insert the two beads. These are seed beads and I am going to insert that. I need 3 beads in all, so I'm going to add one more. And I'm going to pull these 3 beads all the way. This is where the 3 beads are supposed to be. I'm going to wrap it once again and continue my tatting. I need to do 5 more double stitches. So I am going to, since I want this to look a little pointy, I'm going to pull this tight so that these beads form the shape of a triangle. Now I'm going to complete the double stitch. So this is how the beads look. And I'm going to make four more double stitches. So this is my chain, I'm going to pull it a little tight and again I'm going to turn the work. Remember initially I made the ring and then I turned the work and then I made the chain. The reason why I turned my work is because my double stitches of the chain are pointing upwards and when I turn it you can see how the direction goes. The uh, ring is pointing like this whereas the chain is pointing like this. Now I need to make another ring here. Now this time I'm going to show you how to add the bead in another way. So I'm going to pull one bead forward and I'm going to again wrap these beads inside. Now when I start my ring I make, I first hold uh, this place which with my uh, double stitches are ending. I'll wrap it around my index finger, around my pinky and I'm going to hold it again. So the bead is actually in, held inside this ring this time. And you can now see the difference uh, between the first bead which I added here and the bead that I'm going to add now. So I'm going to put the double stitch very close to the first double stitch. So that's one. two and three. Now you need to join this ring which you are going to make now with this ring. So for joining you take your hook insert into this picot and you are going to pull this thread which is the thread which you are holding in the loop. So you are going to pull that thread 
from this uh, uh, peacock you pull it up and you pass the shuttle through it and pull the pull all the thread that is there now pull this index finger forward and that's how you attach your peacocks now if you see this uh, portion of the video two three times you will understand clearly how I did this now I'll make three more double stitches and that's when I have to add my bead that's two and that's three now I'm going to pull this bead like this and I'll leave it there and I'm going to do three more double stitches so it's coming close to the bead so that's three more double stitches I need to have a peacock here and then three more double stitches so that's done now I need to close the ring so I'm going to pull the thread that is coming from the shuttle all the way and that's how we close the ring so you can see there is a remarkable difference between this bead and this bead this bead is going inside while this bead is standing out so you can choose based on your uh, piece the kind of design you want and you can see this if I just add one bead I will have a very small bead hanging like this because I added three it is a little more pointy now I also want to show you how to make a split ring so for making the split ring we again need to work on the thread that is coming from the shuttle for that I am going to wrap the thread to make the ring like this and I'm going to do half of the ring because my ring is 3 3 3 3 so I need to make 6 out of the 12 double stitches that are there in the ring I'm going to make 6 double stitches using my shuttle thread those are 3 double stitches then I'll make a peacock then 3 more double stitches So that's one half of the ring. Now I'm going to leave the shuttle on the table like that and I'm going to turn and this portion is where I'll make the rest of the ring. So this has the half of the ring and this will have the rest of the half. So for that I'm going to hold it like this and this uh, thread which is the thread that is coming from the tail I'm going to fold it into half like this so that I have this kind of a loop it's not compulsory to hold it like that I just use it because it's more convenient for me or you can just use the end of the thread so uh, I am going to start doing the double stitches in the reverse order so in the reverse order means initially when you make double stitches and the ring over here you went under then over then you pulled it out instead of that you need to do it in reverse order so you'll make the second half of the double stitch first which is like going from the top inside this thread and pulling it out like this so this is your second half of the double stitch and you're going to pull that close to this point now you're going to make the first half of the double stitch which will be going from underneath and hold this thread and pass it behind this thread 
and pull. I know it's a little more complicated, but once you get the hang of it, you will understand it. So this is the double stitch. I'm going to do three such double stitches. So second half and then first half. Again, second half and then first half. The only reason why I have folded uh, this thread is because it's uh, much more easier to pull it. Oops. So those are three double stitches. Now I'm going to make the peacock, which is again very simple way, the same way which we make uh, in the regular double stitches. So I just left some place over there. And then I'm going to complete the double stitches by doing two more. So the double stitches are all done. Now I need to close this split ring by pulling the thread that is coming from the shuttle. And that's my split ring. The difference between a ring and a split ring is that when I start a ring, I start from here, go all the way and I again end here. While in a split ring, I start from here, I work this way and this way and I reach here. So this is a very useful tool when we are making bracelets and necklaces. So it's a very important technique to learn. It's also very important to uh, transfer the knots to the loop because uh, if you do not, then you will not be able to pull the shuttle thread and close the ring. Hope this tutorial was useful for you and you can uh, whatever other videos that I make where I show you my creations you can from these basic techniques you can recreate them or make your own designs. Thank you so much.